Okay, here we go, guys. We're still on discerning of spirits, and I'm thinking next week will be the last one. So I'm excited to get moving on to, we'll go to the utterance gifts next. So our God is one. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit is God, right? Amen. And the kingdom of God functions on love, unity, and justice. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is a natural progression of the seven mikvahs. Can people tell me what the seven mikvahs are? I'll start with fire. repentance. Fire. 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 Suffering. Let's start from the beginning. Oh. Repentance, purification, identification, that's water. Okay. okay. And then we have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the mikvah of fire, and then the last two, baptism of, suffering. baptism of sufferings and glory. Amen. So there's a lot of them, and they're ongoing. It's a continual process. With the baptism comes our prayer language and the gifts of the Spirit. And there, is, there are so many books on praying in the Spirit and the benefits to that. So I'm not going to go over all of that, but we're going to talk more about praying in the Spirit when we talk about the, the utterance gifts. Okay, It is not a gift, although it is a gift. It's not one of the gifts of the, the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, It's something that every person baptized in the Holy Spirit should have. Okay. There are three revelation gifts, three power gifts, and three utterance or speaking gifts. We were been talking about the revelation gifts. Talking, we talked about word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and we we're talking about discerning of discernings of spirits because the word is actually plural. Gifts are given as the Holy Spirit wills, right? So we trust Him for that. He is the coordinator of it all, and they're determined for the purposes that the Father has for us and for others, right? Because they're for others. The gifts are for others. They're not for us. They're not to get us all pumped up about how special we are. Right. They're to let other people know how special they are. God loves them so much. So we are created to live and be comfortable seeing the unseen and living in both realms. The seen and the unseen. Last week we looked at many biblical examples and recent testimonies of seeing into that dimension. So many different entities to see, right? There's so many, and they're not all listed in the Bible. There's so much to see. God is a very creative God. And, you know, when we do things the same all the time, we get bored, right? Mm -hmm. And so does he. He likes variety, so he's got lots of things to see. We can see similitude of the Godhead, angels, living creatures, spirits, spirits of just men made perfect, Structures, tools, places, events. We can see in an open vision, a mass vision, imagination, sanctified by the Holy Spirit, dreams and trances, inward vision, open vision, mass vision, all kinds of vision, all kinds of ways to see. This gift is for us, not just leaders or, uh, or ministry gifts, the fivefold. They're for us, the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. We're all ministers. All of us. It didn't stop with the apostles. So let's stop thinking uh, about um, cessationism. It, that's not a thing. That's somebody. That's somebody. Something made. Somebody made up. Man made. Man made up. Yeah, yeah. The the gifts did not stop with the apostles. Now we had a dark age, where a lot of God was shut down. Right? There was. It was why it's called the dark ages. But God has been restoring since that time. Great and mighty things. Great and mighty things to come. So we can't be squabbling about if the Holy Spirit's for us today. We're moved past that, right? right? Amen. So we talked about guidelines. There is a purpose for what we see. What we see in the spirit realm is for revelation. Why does God want to give us revelation? To bring us closer to Him. Yes. To show us what's going on. To walk in his purpose, to deliver the captives, to understand what's going on in a region so that we can pray against it, right? To, to receive messages from the other side. When we see an angelic being, he comes with a scroll, he's given us a message, right? 
We gotta be expectant that things are gonna happen like this to us. We need to be expectant. We're not dead. Amen. We're not dead. We're the living, right? And we live in two realms. When FedEx comes to the door, you know he's got a package for you, right? Well, when the angels come in, there's something for us. They're bringing something to us from the heaven. The Holy Spirit can explain and interpret it, right? He is the one who will interpret whatever vision or whatever we're seeing in the spirit realm. We speak it, we deliver it, we pray over, pray over it. Whatever it is that he wants us to do with that revelation, that's what we do. We just be obedient in what God would have us do with the information. He's sharing a piece of his, his knowing, his, what he sees in the spirit realm, he's showing a piece of it to us. So we just have to be obedient to do with what the information, with what he wants the information done with. That was really bad grammar, wasn't it? But you understand what I mean, right? It should bear witness with other mature believers. So if you're seeing stuff, you should bounce it off of your friends that are filled with the Holy Spirit and have some experience in seeing in the spirit realm, in discernings of spirits, so that they can help you and guide you. Because not only angelics can appear, but demonics can appear as well. Stay teachable. A lot of people get off because they might see something and they're just sure it's God. And they argue, and you argue with them, and you try to show them, and it can't be God because it doesn't match up with the word, or it doesn't bear witness with your spirit, but they're not teachable, and pretty soon they start a cult off of one little weird revelation that they got out of the demonic spirit realm. Okay, So that can't be us. We are supposed to function as a body. Nobody's an island to themselves, right? God leads a group of people. He doesn't pick one special person and give them a, a revelation that nobody else in the body gets. Yeah. Okay, so let's just settle that right now. And if I tell you something that you don't hear other people saying, then I'm in the wrong. Okay? Ask for confirmation. <coughs> ask for confirmation. So important. If you see something, ask the Holy Spirit to show you and to give you confirmation through others, through Him, through, through another person, you know, through the Word. Right? He will confirm his word. He will confirm what he's showing you. Fear not. That's the main thing right there. We can't be afraid of what we're going to see, what we're going to feel, what we're going to know about the spirit realm. Fear not. So now, you ready? We're going in. Okay, so baptism of the Holy Spirit, revelation gifts, discerning of spirits, part five, the bad and the ugly. We talked about the good last week. So now we're going to talk, to talk about the falling beings and the demonic entities. And they can be ugly. There is a counterfeit evil kingdom. Right? Right? Yes. That's the one we were rescued out of. Yeah. So no one can tell us that it doesn't exist. We were in it. We know. We have an adversary, the Nahash, the serpent. And that's how you spell his name in Hebrew. Notice the pitchfork kind of thing. It's funny, isn't it? Um, fundamental meaning of this is that of intuitive knowledge or near accidental skill, an ability to achieve a great technological feat, particularly smelting bronze like a mixture, without truly understanding what makes the magic happen. Now that explains him, doesn't it? Does it explain our enemy? He doesn't understand how the magic happens. He doesn't understand how God does it all. But he tries to mimic it. He can't quite put together. So what he, what he does is he mixes things together and calls it power. He doesn't understand how it all works. The fire, the prayer the air blasted into the furnace, or the zealous faith of the technicians. Words associated with this word, the Nahash, is divination, enchantment, deception, and derision. That explains our adversary. He's a master at divination, witchcraft, deception, and derision. Division. Give us an example of 
enchantment and divination. Incantations. How you you know you think about think about the old picture of the witches. I'm going to throw in a little bit of this, and I'm going to throw in a little bit of this, and I'm going to throw in a little bit of this, and I'm going to stir the pot, and poof. How would you uh, discerning mixing spirits. of chemicals? Um, pharmacia. That's a huge spirit that we deal with today, right? Yeah. Huge fallen being. Um, also, uh, the mixture in our doctrine, the mixture of the devil and the good and the evil in the churches today. That's all his doing. It's not, there are, there are, how do I say this? There are churches that are believing lies made up of man-made religion. It's a mixture of paganism and Christianity. And we see it all over the church today. That's why we're trying to root out the paganism. God told us, come out of Babylon. And what he's saying is get rid of all of that mixture. Serve him alone. And to do that, we're going to have to figure out what's him and what's not him. Amen. Right? That's, that's what I'm asking. And this, because the devil, or the devil, the evil beings, they're an organization. Okay, it's not just one person, one entity. It's an organization. Mm -hmm. And they want to keep us in deception and division, derision. They want to get us into witchcraft and incantation, enchantments, new age, new age, witchcraft, new age, Satanism, cult, it, cult, um, masons, and masonics, or, or words used to invoke demonic in, invoking demonic spirits. Yeah. So this is all. This is all in the name. This is all in his name. This all of this stuff. Very interesting. I found. God knew exactly who we were dealing with, right? Yes. And he's trying to warn us. So the kingdom of darkness has organi organizational structure. We're not just fighting one entity, right? We're fighting an organizational structure. Like God has the divine counsel, the enemy has an evil counsel. Evil spirits. I found this uh, picture very interesting. Um, this um, is the map of Israel's early inhabitants, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Herorites, the Gergesites, the Raphaim, the Am Ammonites, the Moabites, and all the ites. Right? Interesting, the Raphaim. Okay, remember that. So we have fallen members of God's divine council, right? They disobeyed God. They had, the watchers had sex with women, right? Lucifer, Azazel, who is the leader of the watchers, and other higher ranking beings, okay? And then the sons of God, the members of the Elohim, have, having sex with women in Genesis 6, created the Nephilim and the Raphaim. The Raphaim are offspring of the Seraphim. Lucifer was a Seraphim. The Nephilim are offspring of the watchers, other angelics. So you have these children of this hybrid mixture of fallen being and mankind, and they became all the ites. That's why God told them to go into the land and kill them all. They were in, unredeemable, all right? They were unredeemable. And they were wicked, beyond what we can con 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 consider wicked. If you read some of the Dead Sea Scrolls, especially the Book of Enoch, they were so wicked. They were huge, and they were eating. They'd go into the land and eat all the beasts, and then pretty soon they'd start eating humans. They were like 55 feet tall. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were 55 feet tall. Just like... Greek mythology. Greek mythology, exactly. And so that's why, that's why you have the story of Goliath. You know, David and Goliath. And Goliath's four other brothers. They were giants. They were the sons of the Nephilim. They were the Nephilim or the Raphaim. The Raphaim and Nephilim became the war gods fighting for supremacy. You have the Titans in there. You know the movie? Remember the movie Clash of the Titans? The Titans were a group of, of, of evil creatures that had fallen. And they had ruled for some time, but then they were defeated by some of their own ranks. And they are now uh, uh, in the underworld. 
I've done a lot of study, you guys. So, so I may tell you more than you need to know. Balancing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about the ites, I also think about Israelites because they're ites. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. No, they were God's people. They were not, they were not from, from that. God spared their DNA uh, by taking Noah and killing all the rest of them. And then at some point, there were more giants in the land. That means that more of them were having sex with women after the flood. So these other ites were like counterfeit. They were counterfeit, yes. So, but the, the Nephilim, you know, they, they made it with gods. Yes. And demigods. Demigods, but they still had powers and abilities. Yes, large. they so did. to say that one of the gods couldn't survive a flood. Well, and, then and then it's she, possible they did. We don't know how. We don't know how how exactly they reappeared after the flood, but they reappeared. I think that not all of them were on the earth. I think that they all were killed that were on the earth. That more came down. Possibly, we don't know for sure how that all happened, but it happened because David had to kill Goliath. Right. So remember, their legitimacy or illegitimacy and authority as sons of God has been stripped, right? End of story. God stripped their authority and legitimacy. We now have been given legitimacy and authority, right? Through Christ. To be sons of God. They lost their space, their position as sons of God, but we took their position. But actually, we were made higher than they ever were. That's right. The authority and power that they exert is given to them by the sins of man. I'm talking about evil spirits. They have no authority and no legitimacy. Okay. The only power that they have, we have legitimacy, authority, and power, right? Legitimacy and authority, legitimacy through the Father, authority through Jesus, who handed us the keys, right? And the power through the Holy Spirit. The authority and power that they exert, evil beings exert, is given to them by the sins of man. Mm -hmm. They have no power unless we sin. Because that allows them in. That allows them in. It allows them into individuals. It allows them into cities. It allows them into regions. It allows them into countries. But that power doesn't usurp God's it doesn't usurp God's most, power. Most people don't understand. Exactly. That. Because once right, once people turn to God, demonic structures are torn down. That's right. And that's why they will, will convince you that God you can't go to God for forgiveness. You've sinned so horribly because once you once you do that, you cut them off. Right. So that's right. That's why. Yeah, once you turn, once you repent, once you turn to Christ, once you plead the blood, that's right. Once you shut that door, once you stop sinning, they have no hold. So that's the key. You don't want them in your life? Walk in righteousness. Walk in holiness. And when you fall, repent quickly. Okay. But our power comes by the Holy Spirit of God, and there is no greater power. I think, you know, people get all weirded out about, oh, the devil, the devil. The, the devil has no power unless you give him power, unless you decide to give him yours. He has nothing in himself except for, except for ridicule. If they had the ability to kill us all, they already would have. Oh, exactly, exactly. The blood of Jesus, faith in the word of God, walking in the spirit, and living in holiness is the key to winning the battle over these evil spirits. It's the key. And for our country, the key is rescuing people out of darkness and allowing them then to serve the living God and breaking down the structures of, of the evil demonics. The war is won. Jesus did that. We have to appropriate that victory. By faith with works, we live out our victory. By faith with works. The evil kingdom is categorized in Ephesians 6, 12, and uh, you can read that on yourself. Rulers, principalities, powers, right? Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Now, these are higher level evil uh, beings, higher level. They're not the little Nephilim demonics that inhabit people. These are higher level that work in the second heavens. 
that influence our realm. Wherever the Holy Spirit is at work, in one way or another, the counterforce of evil spirits will be present to stop what's going on. They don't want to lose their hold. They've already lost the battle, but they don't want us to know that. They don't want us to know that. So, Allison, right now, tonight, the county commission is debating whether to have invocation before their meetings mm -hmm. and saying it's offensive to the atheists. atheists and others. So is that an example of a higher influence. level of influence? Yes, higher level of demonic influence right? uh, over those city councils or whatever, county councils or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Wanting, to, wanting us to believe that they have power when they really don't. Exactly. Right? And that's right. And as, and as Christians, we have to stand up and speak the truth. People may not decide to follow the truth, but we need to stand up and speak the truth. They have whatever power that we abdicate. If, they abdicated obviously too much, or they wouldn't be asking this. Exactly. Asking we've, we've slipped down the slope so far we that it's going to be a hard back. way. It's going to be a hard way back. We're going to have to get more people saved. So more people want the invocation. So that's what it's all about. It's a numbers game, right? It's a war. It's a war. That's right. Neil, Neil's talked about that, and others in this group have yeah. seen visions of us war. warring. It's not angels, it's us that's right. marching. That's right. Army. You know, when, God's, army. When, God's army. We're an army. And Ridgecrest won as a council, but they didn't. <laughs> Nobody ever... Even Mr. Martin never said that they should never do that. I don't remember. He was the biggest atheist that showed up at every council meeting. But one of the ways they dealt with it is decided by the council that they wanted it. Um, and before I was a council member, I was asked to give the invocation before the meeting. Um, the way they got around it is, though, it was by request of the council members, and they did it before, technically before the meeting started. Right. It was not part of the meeting. It was before the meeting. Yeah, the just before they uh, yeah, called how, the meeting to order. That's how we won. Well, that's how we got it in. Well, yeah. that's how it was when I joined. Well, the atheists sued the county, and a judge ruled in their favor. Well, that's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah, when you have but wicked, when you have wicked still, men in high places, yeah. and that's the why. Is still talking about how because they most of them want. Yeah. Believe it with God. Yeah. Have atheists. Have right. Prayer. But it's a battle. It's a battle. So it's right. A Christian doesn't have a right to pray in any public building. Right. Before a meeting. Yeah. It's yeah. We have a lot of work to do. Yeah. It could affect a lot of things. Yeah. So we have a lot of. Besides what you're saying, yeah. it's real. There, it's real. There's a yeah. real. Thing. Oh yeah. Right now, as we're speaking about. There is a battle. About this, that's, that's right. The battle that's the battle. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Discerning the works of these demonic forces or evil forces will lead, our, lead to our success in setting the captives free. The reason we need discerning of spirits, we need to understand what's behind all that. That's an antichrist spirit, right? That's what we need to be praying against. So let's understanding our realms of authority. First of all, we're commissioned, right? Jesus, didn't Jesus say that? Yeah. Go. Go into all the world. We're ordered. Commissions mean ordered, authorized, and empowered. We're ordered and authorized and empowered by Jesus to go into all the world. Mark 16, 10 through 18. She went out and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After these things, he appeared to, to another, appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. I wonder what the other form was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, I know. Very. Hey, you know, we, uh, we can host angels unaware, right? Yeah. yeah. That's right. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at table and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen 
And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Right? Yes. That's what who said? Jesus. Yeah. If, if you take out that, it's like that's not for today, then why would the rest of the scripture be for today? It's the same sentence, right? In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. We have a job to do. We're supposed to be rescuing people out of the kingdom of darkness, right? How can you do that without the power of the Holy Spirit? It becomes a logical ascent. People do receive Jesus, right? They do receive Jesus without any mention of the Holy Spirit, but it's a mental ascent, right? Until then the Holy Spirit actually changes them when they really believe, right? But they're left there with no power over the demonic structure that they're supposed to be called to fight. He gives us the power to fight the structure and to dismantle it. We are to dismantle this dark structure that these demonics have built. And they've built it under a lie. And we've all believed it. So that's got to stop. Believe it and execute. Believe Christ and execute what he told you to do. Acts 16, 6 through 10. And they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit, forbidden by the Holy Spirit yeah. to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come up to, to Messiah, they attempted to go unto Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. Okay. There you go. So passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there. It's a lot of seeing going on. A lot of sensing the spirit realm here. That's what I want you to see. This should be our daily life. A man from Macedonia was standing there urging him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on to Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Yeah, I think it was a good sign, yeah. right? Good sign. And that happened in a vision. Is that, I was getting my geography in order. Macedonia? That's, yeah. Is that Egypt? I mean, no. Uh, Asia? No. no. Ma Macedonia is up above Greece. Isn't that where Andrea? That's where Andrea went. Uh, on the mission trip. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Below Russia. Below, yeah. Below, yeah, all the Slavic states. It's kind of part of the Slavic states. So do you think in the very beginning of that act there where he's saying you're being forbidden to go mm -hmm. into Asia, it's a timing thing in God's... Yeah, probably he was call. keeping them from death. I'm sure. Well, that too, right? I, yeah. That could be a, I think he was warning them, don't go there. Don't go there right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he had another work for them to do, right? But the point is, is they had to be tapped into the spirit realm so that they could get the messages that they needed through the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit of Jesus, through a vision, and through a man. And be obedient. And be obedient. And do it. Believe and execute. And do it. Believe and execute. Wow. Right? Uh, What's the difference between the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of Jesus? Well, the Holy Spirit is his own entity, right? Yeah. He's part of the Godhead. And then you have Jesus and his spirit. They're all one. They're all one. But they are different. They're unique, right? They're all unique, but they're all one. And that's so hard for most Christians to grasp. They play different roles. Thank you. They're one and the same, but they play different roles. 
They play different roles. They have different functions. Jesus, exactly. They have the same purpose, intent, agreement, collectively. Yes, yes, that's right. Well, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Himself. Spirit of Jesus. Is Jesus Himself? They're all Jesus. They're all God. They're all God. Well, how it's, it's like this. It's like this. Here we go. Is a spirit. It would be the same thing. I think so. Jesus. Yeah, the spirit of Kim. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like we could say, the Holy Spirit told me, or you know, you how you know you hear the Holy Spirit direct you, right? Or you can, if you hear a a different voice, you know, and you know it's the Lord. Paul knew the bright light that came. Paul knew it was the Lord Himself right he knew there's a difference between them but they all are working together for the same purpose they just have different function right. and they have a different jesus has a body right. Right? right the father has a body whatever that is like it's like fire and then the spirit has a spiritual type of existence right i know i know it when we were in that four square church, I think we said last time that we saw, both of us saw Jesus walk in. I would call that same thing. The spirit, the spirit of, of Jesus, Jesus walked in the room. Yeah, yeah. We both knew, we, we both had seen angels before. We both knew without talking to each other that it was Jesus that walked in, right. not an angel. Right, right. Yes. I don't know how I knew that yes. other than I knew that. Exactly. Your spirit knew it. Right, our spirit knew it. The Holy Spirit in us knew. I think Bob Jones said he went up, he was caught up in the third heaven with uh -huh. the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And he walked into, do you remember that story? No. I don't remember no. either, but he said he met the Holy Spirit yeah. in the third heaven one time. Mm -hmm. Very well, we all know the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. We may not have seen his similitude, but um, we, I believe he does. Oh. Yeah, I believe he does. Mm -hmm. It's like steam. You know, there's water and ice and steam, but they're all water. They're all. Right. He's got. He's got a. He's got a some type of existence. Some he kind. Can he could. Anyway. Yeah, it's so like true. The cloud, of glory. the cloud of glory, the Shekinah, the dove, the. Yeah, he's all kinds of. Remember all the symbols we talked about. Okay, so Acts 16, let's go on, 16 through 18. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination. Now, that is translated spirit of Python mm -hmm. and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us crying out, these men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. Doesn't sound so bad, right? That's interesting. But she has a uh -huh. divination, but uh -huh. what she's proclaiming. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. she, she, no, she's working. She's working it. Yeah, right on the she's a tag along. She's a tag along so that she can get money for her masters. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But she can see on both sides of the fence. Oh, she can see into the spirit realm for sure through the spirit of divination. The divination is kind of the right. demonic equivalent to word of knowledge and word of wisdom. Yes, it is. Yes. So she followed Paul and crying out, "These are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation," and this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. I think he did. And I don't know why he put up with it for several, several days. Either he didn't discern it immediately or he was just, you know, it was like, don't pay attention to that. They'll go away. I don't know. The spirit of divination is the counterfeit of the word of knowledge and prophecy. Sometimes it's difficult to see, but the gift of discerning of spirits can see through the deception and judge it as evil. Then he set her free. Note that it was connected to money. She was making money off of her divination. Right. And by being where the crowd was following them, right, she was giving validation to her own ministry. Right. Yeah. All about money. So we're to test every spirit. Angels of light, 
2 Corinthians 11, 13 through Paul, Paul is 13 through 15. Paul is speaking of those who boast in themselves and take God's glory to themselves. So be sure that if you see something evil and they're pretending to be good, you know, or you're sensing something's not quite right, they will bring glory to themselves. Okay, you want to ask them who they serve. Ask them if Jesus rose from the dead. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. You know them by their fruits? Yeah. Yes. If they lead you away... If they appear to you and they're all beautiful, but they lead you away from Christ and Him resurrected, there's something wrong there. Well, what do you do? Like you have a situation, or have you had a situation where you, somebody walks in mm -hmm. and they get up and prophesy a word that, you know, that word seems like right on. Uh huh. And yet there's something that's like mm -hmm. right here. It's like something's just not right. You know. If the word is, if the word is good, off. yes. The, if the word is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. If the word is good, the word can be good, but what you're sensing is something in their filter is messed up. Something's, something's just not Motivations right. are messed up. The whole spirit about them, something seems wrong. Yes. So what they're saying is good. Is good. It's yeah. yeah. It's yeah. happened in churches where somebody gives a prophecy uh, like to everybody that they should really pay attention and follow this man of God, of the, you know, usually the pastor or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're obviously the people are already doing that and they wouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. But they're doing this to, one, exalt the guy on the stage mm -hmm. and at the same time assimilate them himself and validate himself by him validating the minister that they all know is leading them anyway. Right. Right. And that'll give you one of those. Yeah. Why, yeah. Why are you telling? Why do you need to be saying this? Yeah. Well, and we all we all run into people. We all run into people who have demonic things going on inside of them. All of us. And the, the first thing you need to be able to do is discern it, right? If you don't discern it, people get taken down the road into all kinds of stupid stuff if you don't discern it. So first of all, discern. Second of all, test. Third of all, look for the fruit in their life. If they're like prophesying and working in the church or wanting to work in the church, but their home life is a mess, um, their husband can't stand them, or their kids are on drugs or whatever, something's not right in that house, okay? You don't minister to God's people before you minister to your own family, right? You take care of that first. So something's not right there. They're, look for the fruit in their life and then look over time because usually those kind of people, they can hold on for a little while, but they'll slip eventually. They'll eventually slip and you'll see it. So if you have a, if you, as long as they're not causing a lot of damage, you know, if they're not causing damage in the church or whatever, you just kind of put it on the shelf for a bit and watch, talk to them personally. The pastor should right? The pastor should talk to them personally. Um, and eventually, if they're not teachable, then you, I'm sorry, you have to expose them. You have to say, I'm sorry, but we're not going to receive any more of your prophecies. Maybe that's what Paul did. That's what Paul did. That's it. You're done. Yeah. That's You're it. done. You're done. We had an example of that in walking out of a church that an elder spoke a word and each had a different interpretation of that word through discernment, I being one of them. And my discernment was different than others, such as yourself and my wife, and mm -hmm. Stephanie, you and others, Brian. And I just, but my spirit told me it's not right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the word was for himself more than <laughs> it was for yeah. Yeah. the yeah. Edification of us. So yeah, right. I know what you're talking about. 
Yeah. I know you know what I'm talking yeah. about. That's why it's, it's really good in group situations where people are prophesying or giving words. It's so important to judge the word. And then, and then it's important to acknowledge that, yes, it's a good word. Or, no, it's not a good word. It no. was a teaching moment. It's very yeah. Yeah. It, was. it should have been. It was. Yeah. It was a teaching for us, right? Yes. Yeah. It, it was. For me. Yeah. It was very yeah. I've seen that happen more than once where in a group, um, God will be dealing with a person about something in particular. Hmm. And it is true. And they're hearing from God. Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe that. But it's kind of a arrogant act on their part God is trying to deal with them and they want to tell everybody that everybody needs to deal with the same sin in their life <laughs> right Amen. right yeah here yeah. we go well it's like it's like tonight so it's, it's when sad. I, I they are hearing from God yeah. they just needed to deal with it themselves you know I was getting something yeah tonight I was getting something from the Lord and I had to ask him is this for somebody else or is, what is this you know who is this for and he's like daughter this is for you you know, and I didn't need to, I needed need to pick anybody out or ask if anybody else felt the same way. He said it was for me. You know, I just needed help. <laughs> well, I dealing with somebody about what they're doing in their, in their spare time. And all of a sudden they change it to a prophecy that God wants us all to deal with our spare time and what we're doing with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's a mixture. That's the mixture, the mixture that the Lord's talking about and it's harder to with judge. the enemy. It's harder to judge because, yeah, that could always be true, right? That's right. So. That's right. So it's it's always so easy if you see something demonic that it looks demonic, and you're like, oh man, that's really demonic, right? It's obvious, obviously demonic, but it's the angel of light situation that is a little more is a little harder to discern, and you really need discerning of spirits for that. And I wanted to. Because they're masters of deception, right. right? So I wanted to, okay, this isn't scripture. Okay, I'm going to say it's scripture, but this is found. This was found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's the Forgotten Books of Eden, the Book of Adam. And it's um, the second tempting of Adam and Eve in chapter 27. And it talks about angels of light. Even if this is just a story, okay, even if it's just a a story that was written, it still is a good story that, that shows what you do and how these angels of light can operate. Okay, so we're going to read it. When Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continued, how Adam and Eve, right, after the fall, after they were kicked out of the garden, they were living in a cave, okay? When Satan, the hater of all good, saw how they continued in prayer and how God communed with them and comforted them and how he had accepted their offering, Satan made an apparition. He began with transforming his hosts in his hands w was a flashing fire and they were a great light. He then placed his throne near the mouth of the cave because he could not enter into it by reason of their prayers. Interesting. He couldn't enter into the cave because of the prayers that Adam and Eve were offering up. Shows the strength. Who Amen. Has the power? Yeah. And he shed light into the cave until the cave glistened over Adam and Eve while his hosts began to sing praises. And Satan did this in order that when Adam saw the light, he should think within himself that it was a heavenly light and that Satan's hosts were angels and that God had sent them to watch at the cave and to give him light in the darkness. So that when Adam came out of the cave and saw them and Adam and Eve bowed to Satan, then he would overcome Adam thereby a second time, humbled, humbling him before God. And right and that is like right in front of God, doing something right in front of him. That's what the devil wanted to do. Yeah. When therefore Adam and Eve saw the light, fancying it was real, they strengthened their hearts. Yet as they were trembling, Adam said to Eve, look at that great light and at those many songs of praise and at the host standing outside that did not come into us. Do not tell us what they say or whence they came. So they didn't tell, they didn't tell them where they came from. They didn't tell them what they were doing or anything like that, right? Um, or what is the meaning of the light? 
that those praises are. They didn't tell him, didn't give him any real information, true information. Wherefore, they have been sent hither and why they did not come in. Yeah. Right? Are they upside? Yeah. So he started questioning, who are all these, uh, what's all this going on here? If they were from God, they would come into us, into the cave, and would tell us their errand. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a good key, yeah. mm -hmm. right? When somebody, somebody, when some entity shows up, supposedly from God, what is their errand? What are they there for, right? right? Then Adam stood up and prayed unto God with a fervent heart and said, O oh Lord, is there in the world another God than you? Right? Because he, here he saw this great light outside the cave. Is there another God that I didn't know about? Mm -hmm. Thou who created angels and filled them with light and sent them to keep us, who would, come, who would come with them? But lo, we see these hosts that stand at the mouth of the cave. They are in a great light. They sing loud praises. If they are of some other God, if there's some other God than you, tell me. And if they are sent by you, inform me of this reason for which they've been sent. You know, Allison, I was thinking, in the Garden of Eden, maybe there was the, the angels, maybe they were light, like guarding the that, Eden, Right. and this is yes. what they're... Yes, they had seen angels. Them. Yeah, That's exactly. Them. Counterfeit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Counterfeit. So no sooner had Adam said this than an angel from God appeared unto him. So he, let's go back. What did they do when they were confronted with this, this fake possibility? They prayed and they asked God to show them what are they here for? Who are they and what are they here for? Right? So no sooner had Adam said this than an angel from God appeared unto him in the cave who said unto him, O oh Adam, fear not. That is Satan and his hosts. He wishes to deceive you as he deceived you at first. For the first time he was hidden in the serpent, but this time he has come to you in a similitude of an angel of light in order that when you worshiped him, he might enthrall you in the very presence or right in front of God. Then the angel went from Adam and seized Satan at the opening of the cave and stripped him of the, of the sham of his whole, the whole sham that he was putting on. He had, he had assumed and brought him in his own hideous form to Adam and Eve, who were afraid of him when they saw him. And the angel said, Adam, this hideous form has been his ever since God made him fall from heaven. He could not have come near you in it. Therefore did he transform himself into an angel of light. Then the angel drove away Satan and his host from Adam and Eve and said unto them, Fear not, God who created you will strengthen you. And the angel went from them, but Adam and Eve remained. So this is a good, this is a good picture of how it works, right? So when you see something, you ask them what they're there for. If it doesn't line up, you ask God, what are they here for? What's going on here? So Mary and receiving the word and the word from the angel was fear not fear not right for the lord is with you yes the lord is with you immediately talked about what his errand is right, right. there right immediately there. Right before their proceeding assignment. further yeah immediately they come on assignment yeah remember that the devil comes to kill still and destroy right he comes with derision division he wants to separate you from the truth so it's very important that you judge through with the discerning of spirits. You judge through what are they there for? Well, who is this? Who am I talking to? Almost That's why it's immediately, 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 immediately. Don't get enthralled with them. Right. Right. Don't get all like, what's going on here, man? I want to know I more about. Three no. Of this before I exactly. That. And then okay. this is why it's so important too to know the word, right? They they know the word. Oh yeah. But they don't understand all the word. We can know the word and understand the word. This is like where Joseph Smith was Thank you. And um, Muhammad. Muhammad, Joseph Smith, all, yes, all of the cults, they were deceived by angels of light. Okay, so this story shows us so many important things. In fact, everything we need to know about how to deal with angels of light. I just, I just love this story. There's, there's, more, there's so much more in those books that have taught me so much. Um, now, whether they're exactly true or not, I don't know, but the, 
principles mm -hmm. that you learn from the books are good. Okay. Like reading, you know, like reading C.S. Lewis or something. Mm -hmm. You can learn principles, the godly principles, right. okay? They're yeah, they're quoted, yeah. Um, okay, so deception and disguise are the enemy's ploy. He is a sham artist. Let's just keep him in perspective. He is nothing. He's grotesque. And in his form, he can do nothing to us. And it reminds me of my dream, the cougar dogs coming after me. They couldn't do nothing. I was running for nothing. And when I turned around and held up my hand and started speaking to them, stop, and they couldn't get, they couldn't get within six feet of me. Amen. Amen. Don't run. Don't run. Fear not. Just realize what we're up against here. Right? They're a fallen creature. They're losers. We have already won the battle. Right? We are to test every spirit and ask God for insight. We have the authority over them and can receive help from angels. Fear not. We are to see the enemy for what he really is. Don't glamorize him or make him out to be something significant. I, that's when, you know, that, some of those exorcist movies where, you know, the, at the end the priest gets, you know, gets demonized, gets possessed. possessed you know, for goodness sakes, stop glamorizing him. We cast them out and move on. This gift can enable us to know the various kinds of demons, discerning of spirits, can, we can understand the various types, the various kinds of demons present and what harm they are working or intending to work in the lives of other people or other, co other con information concerning them. The, gifts, the gift can reveal divination, witchcraft, Jezebel, Python, lying spirits, unclean spirits, spirits of infirmity, cancer, deafness, blindness, dumbness, all spirits. Water spirits, regional spirits over cities and nations. Remember when Jesus rebuked the storm. Water spirits. Names of demons and fallen beings. Numbers of demons and more. Whatever God wants to reveal through this, through this gift, he can reveal. Whatever we need to accomplish the task of getting them out, he can reveal. Don't get caught up in the details. Doesn't mean you have to know the name of a demon before you cast them out or how many there are. It doesn't matter. Amen. We function on the information God gives us. Authority. He gives us enough to do the job. How many days did Paul wait to cast out the demon in that lady? It said several. Yeah, it wasn't specific. So Jesus frequently operated in discerning of spirits. He confronted Satan himself, right? The lead guy. Uh, face to face in the wilderness. He discerned something, something satanically sinister in a storm and rebuked it. Jesus communed with Elijah and Moses, right? All discerning of spirits. The disciples saw it. In John 1, 47 through 48, Jesus discerned Nathanael's spirit as being without deceit. So now he's seeing the spirit of a man. We can, we can do this. And wouldn't it be great if we could? So many people would not be fooled if they could discern the spirit of the man talking to them. Yeah. We must understand God's heart where evil is concerned. Joel 2.32 And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. This is God's plan, that all God's people are free, delivered. For in, the Mount, in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. He wants us free in every aspect. Malat, the Lord shall be... The, Whoever shall call in the name of the Lord shall be delivered. That is Malat. Malat means to escape or slip away from or be saved. To slip away, to be, to be taken away from the, from the kingdom of darkness and placed into the kingdom of light. And the other word for deliverance there, Jerusalem shall be deliverance. That is an escaped remnant and deliverance. There shall be a remnant that has escaped the kingdom of darkness. 
Amen. Amen. That's who we are. We're the free. We're the delivered. We're the saved. Freedom. Amen. And John 10, 10 says, the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they might have life. And that word is Zoe. And that they might have it more abundantly. Parisos. Parisos means exceeding some number or measure or rank or need over and above. More than is necessary. Super added. Exceeding abundantly. Supremely. Something further. More. Much more than all. More purely. Superior. Extraordinary. Surpassing. Uncommon. Preeminence. Superiority. Advantage, more imminent, more remarkable, more excellent. That's how he wants his people to live. More, more than the natural world. We're supernatural. We're supernatural. And Zoe means possessing vitality, animate, uh, a life active and vigorous, devoted to God, blessed, absolute fullness of life. Can you... Imagine being so full of life, there's nothing, there's no more space for more life inside of you. I think at that time we'll all just kind of transform, right? We'll just walk in the glory. Absolute fullness of life, both essential and ethical, which belongs to God. We are lives that belong to God. The devil has nothing in us if we don't allow him. If we'll walk according to God's ways, his statutes, his law, if we will walk according to what he wants, the devil will have nothing on us. If you haven't been taught or don't believe that you deserve life abundant, then you won't have it. Right? And there's plenty of churches that will tell you you can't ever be perfect. You can't ever live like Jesus lived. And that's not true. You can have life abundant. Jesus died that you would have life abundant. If you haven't been taught and don't believe there is a supernatural realm, you will be a slave and puppet for the enemy. If you haven't been taught or don't believe that Christians can be demonized, you may never experience the freedom that Christ died for to give you abundant life. You will never cast demons out of Christians who are struggling to be free. If you don't believe Christians can have demons, you'll never bring freedom to your brother or your sister. You join the league of the enemy to keep people in bondage. You become an enemy of God. Our responsibility in dealing with the Nahash, the enemy, the advers adversary, in ourselves, do not yield to sin. How do you deal with the adversary in your own life? Do not yield to sin. But if you do, repent quickly for it. That's what Jesus said. Protect your gates, your eyes, your ears, your heart. Give the devil no place to hook you up. Ooh, that's really prophetic, wasn't it? Felt that hook right there. Fear. Well, praise God, I got delivered. You know, praise God yeah. for deliverance. I think I'm a Christian, right? Yeah. Whew. Okay, so give the devil no place to hook you up. Take communion frequently, right, Daniel? Take communion frequently, renewing your covenant of deliverance. And if you have, I, you know what? I found another copy of that book. You did? Yeah, so you can just keep it or pass it on. Yeah. Dr. Anna Mendez Farrell wrote a book. Uh, what's the name of it? The Power of Communion. No. Oh. No. Eat, his eat, my, eat my flesh, eat drink my blood. Yeah. And it is a great revelation um, on communion and, and renewing your covenant. Amen. yourself up with God. Amen. Praise, worship, the word, and declaration. There it is. Declaration is so important. Deliverance. Okay. Here... Besides deliverance, do not yield to sin, protect your gates, give the devil no place, take communion and fill yourself up with God. And if you've done all that, but you're still struggling, get deliverance. Get deliverance. If you're still struggling after all of that, 
seek out deliverance. You can perform your own deliverance. You can seek out deliverance from others. The Holy Spirit can deliver you. Okay? There's no need to be demonized. I'm not saying Christians can be demon-possessed because our spirits belong to God, right? But we have a soul and we have a body, and that's where the enemy works against us. Christians who know what it means to be Christians. Christians who knows what, who... Exactly. Okay, so John 14, 30. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. This is when Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane, right? And he has nothing in me. Now, the word nothing is the word Otis. And Otis means nothing or no one. So read it like that. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has no one in me. No demons. No yeah, that's how we want to be. Amen. We don't want to have any of the kingdom of darkness in us. No. Any members. We do not wear vacancy signs. We're full. We need to be full. Romans 6, you should read all of Romans 6, but I want to read verses 17 through 19. But you should read all of Romans. What am I saying? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more law lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. That's how we stay free. That's how we stay free. Sanctification is an ongoing process. If you have sin, repent. If you are in the flesh, crucify it. If your mind is squirrely, renew it by learning his word. If you have demons, cast them out. If you are operating under a curse or generational things, generational curses, break it by instituting your covenant. And if you are being attacked by the adversary, stand and believe. And when I say stand, that's, that's not just a stand. That's stand. Stand your ground. Don't let them take ground. Fight if you have to. Okay, demonized Christians. Of salvation, your spirit is, immediate, is, is immediately rescued from the kingdom of darkness and inhabited by God through the Holy Spirit. Belonging to God. Okay. It's like Joshua, and God says to Joshua, the promised land is yours, right? I'm making a comparison here. Patterns. Our soul is renewed by a process of dispossessing the enemy, dispossessing the enemy's notions, the way the world works, all of that. It's step by step, we get those worldly thoughts out of our head, okay? So dispossessing the enemy, false ideas, doctrines of demons, and conforming to the word we receive, understand, and apply. This is like Joshua, kick out the enemy of your land. That's your land, but you got to go in there and kick out all the ites. Amen. So once you're saved, your next step is to renew your mind and kick out the ites. Sozo. Sozo. That's right. Explain that. Life. Sozo? Yeah. I don't know. It's ongoing, oh, yeah. ongoing sanctification. Yeah. Okay, that's good. As you learn the word and build a relationship with Yeshua, you start to see that you must be changed into the image of Christ. And you know what? You start changing. And the next year you look a little bit better. And the next year you look a little bit better. And the next year you look a little bit more like Christ. And the next year you look a little bit more like Christ. All from renewing your mind and keeping yourself free from the ites. This is like Joshua building God's kingdom in the promised land. Okay? 
God's all about patterns. Matthew 12, 28, Jesus said, but if I, by the spirit of God, drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. So we get out the demonic influences. We establish the kingdom of God in our lives. Any questions? Okay. Embrace the word, resist the devil, and he will flee. Embrace the word, resist the devil, and he will flee. It's not just resist the devil and he will flee. You have to embrace, make the word a part of you, and then resist the devil and he will flee. You may need, you may need deliverance if you find yourself in a strong hold of a sin that you don't want but can't seem to stop. Addictions, lying, controlling, fear, rejection, sexual promiscuity, mental illness, any compulsion that you are not able to stop. Some of these things may be seen by you or revealed to you by the Holy Spirit or seen by friends and family. You may need deliverance if you have opened the doors to the occult, witchcraft, new age, sexual ritual abuse, fantasy games, religious cults, Churches filled with religious bondage. You may need deliverance if you have a physical condition associated with a demon or demonic influence, such as autoimmune diseases, GI disorders, cancers, etc. We live in such a Greek mentality country. Every Thing can be cured by medication, psychiatry, right? Diseases, people spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get healed. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But we're not dealing with the root problems. Yeah. Why? We've been conditioned. You, when we're sick, we go to the doctor. Right. Well, in our house, we don't do that too readily. If something happens, we confront the devil immediately. Right? Get a headache. No. No. That is not mine. That's not a part of my covenant. No. Get off. Get off of me. Go from me. In Jesus' name, go from me. You have no place here. I am not your property. If it stays, I start searching my heart. Do I have an open gate? Is there some sin I'm involved in that's allowing this thing to stay? Take care of that. Okay, then command it to go. Because now I can enforce my covenant again. I mean, I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. Of course go to the doctor if you need to go to the doctor. What I'm saying is that shouldn't be our first line of defense. Right? We should confront these things. We have the authority, the legitimacy, and the power to do it. And we should confront it. We shouldn't put up with sickness and disease. And I'm preaching to myself, okay, but when is the church going to finally stand up and say, no more, I'm cutting the enemy off. It's not part of our covenant. And you don't know your covenant, you better go back to reading Deuteronomy. The Jews understood that that's one of the reasons they had certain uh, sacrifices they had to make in the... Uh, Tabernacle. That's right. For certain diseases. For certain diseases. That's right. They. That's why um, they. Jesus was asked, "Was it this man, or his, this man, or his father who sinned?" Which is why he had this disease. Right. They saw it that way. They saw it that way. That's right. But they knew that when you were in covenant, you were in covenant, and God protected you. You know, there were sacrifices for even leprosy to be healed of leprosy. And the priests performed sacrifices and healed people in the temple. If they could do it, how much better is our covenant? How much better is our covenant through Jesus? He's the healer. Right. And you know what? I think that's easy. I think it's easy sometimes, right? It's easy just to go to the doctor and that's it. But what if we come to a time where we can't go to the doctor anymore? We better, be, we better get used to walking by faith, 
right? Living by faith. And that's what Jesus said when he came back. Would he find faith in the earth? You don't go to boot camp. Well, say it again. You don't go to boot camp for the word today. I know. That's exactly right. You better have already been prepared. You prepare before the war. That's right. He's going to show us things that we can use right. that are medicinal for us, that right. are natural, in right. lieu of something that's right. not. I and then, right. And then the other thing is, Mike, is there's gifts of healing. And we need to tap into that, yes. right? I want to see that more. Amen. we got to tap into that. We need to believe God for that. Okay, so there's some videos I want you to watch, and I don't want to show them because they take up a lot of time, but I want you to watch them, so write them down. Unbothered by Dr. Matthew Stevenson from All, All Nations Chicago. That's the cha YouTube channel. Unbothered. Yeah, Unbothered. And it's about discerning of spirits, and it, he is a fiery, uh, pro young prophet, prophet apostle. And uh, he, I love him. He's awesome. Yes. So you're, you're going to love his, his ministry is very good. He predominantly, he preaches to mostly a, a black congregation in Chicago. It gets pretty fiery and he speaks the truth in love, but he lets them have it. I love him. Okay. The other one is going deeper into the gift of discerning of spirits by Jennifer Evaz on her YouTube channel, Jennifer Evaz. Kim and I started watching it, it's very good. Yeah. Is she the one that did the book? She did the book. The book's very good. The book's very good. You have it, right? Yeah. Audible? Audible? Audible book. The other one is uh, Discerning of Spirits, parts one through five by Jonathan Welton. Okay. On the channel name is He Lives. Okay, so in us, we talked about what to do when we are being demonized. What about when others are being demonized around us? Pray. Pray for them. Intercession is a huge tool for life change in other people. It is. It is. It's real. It's real. Cast them out. It's better to have a willing victim. But if they're manifesting to, where, to the point where they're not there, only the demon is there, <laughs> then you got to cast them out, right? But it's better to have a willing person who knows they're having trouble and they want deliverance. It's better that way because you have their will involved. Matthew 8, 10 says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, so give without paying. I won't even talk about the ministries that pay for this, that get, have to, you can't, you got to get an appointment and you got to pay $1,500 to get demons cast out. That's an abomination. Okay. Speak, speak truth to your friends who are demonized. Speak God's word to them. Breaking the deception that they are under is a way to get them to dissociate from the evil that keeps them bound. They've got to see the truth, right? So those are the things that you do for other people. In our city, nation, and the world, how do we deal with those? We ask God to intervene and have faith that he is. We declare God's word over the area. Don't believe and speak lies and death over your land. Proclaim the victory of our Lord. Speak what God speaks. Praise and worship God for the victory over our land, over our courts, over, over our council meetings, over, over our country, over the White House, over the Congress, over the House, over all of it. Start speaking what God is speaking. Preach Jesus to everyone you know. Preach Jesus evangelize this delivers people out of the kingdom of darkness and out of the d dominion of darkness if we get enough people saved <laughs> the courts will tip the congress will tip where the men and women are righteous the people rejoice right I have, a vision. I have a vision right now yeah. Every one of those Democrats being 
falling in the spirit. Amen. And one of their debates, they're standing just like you at the podium. And God hits and, them. And they fall out. Praise like God. Dominoes. Praise God. Do it, Lord. Do it. Do it, Lord. Get them. Wait till the audience is used to see it. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just thank you that you're moving over all of our, all of our politicians, Lord. All of those in authority. We thank you, Lord, for righteousness. We thank you, Lord. Teach God's word and ways to believers. Teach God's words and ways to believers. Be a light to the unbeliever. Be a light, but teach God's word and ways to believers. Be a standard bearer in prayer and in deed. Intercession is part of being a standard bearer, right? And having good works is part of being a standard bearer. We should be walking like Christ. They should know we're God people. They should know we're God people. I want to read this. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth wrote about discerning of spirits, and then we're going to close. This is way back. You know, he, he, this is back in like the 1800s. Yeah. The Holy Ghost will give us this gift of discerning of spirits if we desire it, so that we may perceive by revelation this evil power which comes in to destroy. He'll give it to us. He'll give it to us. If we ask for it, he'll give it to us. Amen. We can reach out and get this unction of the spirit that will reveal these things unto us. You will have people come to meetings who are spiritists. You must be able to deal with spiritist conditions. These are divination people, witchcraft people. Um, you can so deal with them that they will not have any power in the meetings. If you ever have theosophists or Christian scientists, you must be able to discern them and settle them. Never play with them. Always clear them out. They are better with their own company always, unless they are willing to be delivered from the delusion they are in. Remember the warning of the Lord Jesus, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. Before Satan can bring his evil spirits, there has to be an open door. Hear what the scriptures say. The wicked one touches him not. In 1 John 5, 18. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Psalms 121, 7. How does Satan get an opening? When the saint ceases to seek after holiness, purity, righteousness, truth. When he ceases to pray, stops reading the word, and gives way to carnal appetites, then it is that Satan comes. So often sickness comes as a result of disobedience. David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Hmm. Seek the Lord and he will sanctify every thought, every act, till your whole being is ablaze with the, whole, with the holy purity. And your one desire will be for him who has created you in holiness. Oh, this holiness. Can we be made pure? We can. Every inbred sin must go. God can cleanse away every evil thought. Can we have a hatred or a sin for a sin and a love for righteousness? Yes. God will create within thee a pure heart. He will take away the stony heart out of the flesh. He will sprinkle thee with clean water, and thou shalt be cleansed from all thy filthiness. When will he do it? When you seek him for such inward purity. Amen. Amen. We've got to hunger after righteousness and purity. The devil won't have any, anyone in us. He won't have any hold on us if we do this. Here's some books that, um, for you that are uh, seers and that want to see into the uh, spirit realm. These are really, I've read The School of the Seers. Um, I've read The Seer. And I've read Regions of Captivity. Grayson has read Seeing, in the, Seeing the Supernatural. Uh, somebody's Secrets of the Seer. Somebody has that. I don't know if they've read it yet. Um, Michael Heisner's uh, The Unseen Realm is really good. It's deep, but it's good. Um, so anyway, these are some good books if you want to see more in the spirit realm. Okay? Um, and if you need this uh, list, just let, let me know. <laughs>